Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Good to see you again. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act Two. I'm John Coleman, my co-founder for Celebrating Act Two, Art Kirsch, and of course, the ever-lovable Bill Jordan. <laughs> Bill, Bill, what's on your mind today? I have never been called the ever-lovable. There's ever, probably a reason for that. Ever-lovable? Ever-lovable. Okay. No, I, I, something on my mind is because it's a kind of a nonstop thing for us where we are in, uh, in North Carolina, you guys in California. Do you guys do your own lawn work or yard work or any of that stuff? No, no, I haven't done it for years. Art, you're in, a, you're in a community. They do it for you, don't they you? Do the, don't they do it for The last time I did a lawn, I owned a house on uh, Long Island. And uh, I used to uh, have a... First, a, a, a gas powered, and then uh, as it was small enough, they used electric, and it was always a pain in the butt. I hated doing it, yeah. but I did gotcha. it. No more. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, on a ranch. I'm on a ranch, and, and there's no lawn, per se. We have weeds, and we have rocks, gotcha. and we have horse shit. That's what we have. <laughs> Those are the three things we have. But and, I don't take do any of them. So. John, do you fertilize the, the horse shit? <laughs> I, <laughs> I try to, yeah. Okay. I tell you, um, when I was back on the air a number of years ago, one of my female partners, the, the, if you had to describe the show, it would have been thusly. I did not believe in paying someone to do something that I could do myself, and she did not believe in doing something for herself if she could pay someone else to do it. <laughs> there you go. So Good combination. That, that has, brings me up to, to lawn care and this yard work that we are in the midst of here in North Carolina, probably in the southeast. Uh, it is once it starts, it just does not stop. And when I'm mowing the lawn, it's probably in September. I'm starting to make wagers with myself. Will there be one more? Sh Do I have to cut it one more time or two more times? It's like I'm trying to I'm trying to you know bargain with Mother Nature's when the grass is going to stop. And um, I I just I, 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 there are people who who do pay to have their yards worked on. Uh, there are people maybe with home, uh, in homeowners associations where their lawns or whatever are taken care of. I've got friends who run landscaping companies and they do very, very well. And the lawns are just majestic and they look great. And I'm just not into doing all that stuff to where I'm trying to save money and doing, I think, things the smart way. But it, it just, it's so time intensive with the yard work. I, again, I... I kind of embrace it because it keeps me active and it is a good form of exercise. But man, I, I can tell that I'm slowing down a little bit this year. But I wanted to share with you guys this piece that I wish I could claim that I wish I could say that I wrote this or thought this up because I find it so creative and so common sense that we I used to do this on the air and, and to set the scene correctly, I used to do this with like some Gregarian monk chanting behind it like oh very, sort of, a, sort of a, a a heavenly background to it and the gist of this is imagine the conversation the creator god might have with saint francis on the subject of lawns now think about this it, 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 now you you got both have experience you know what i'm talking about with this stuff we all know oh, yeah. what so check this out. Here's the conversation between God and St. Francis. Imagine the Gregorian monks chanting behind me. So God starts off, hey, St. Francis, this is how God talks. Hey, 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 yeah. hey St. Francis, you know all about gardens and nature. What in the world is going on down there? What happened to the dandelions, the violets, the thistle and stuff I started eons ago? I had a perfect no-maintenance garden plan. Those plants grow in any type of soil, withstand drought, and multiply with abandon. The nectar from the long-lasting blossoms attract butterflies, honeybees, and flocks of songbirds. I expected to see a vast garden of colors by now, but all I see are these little green rectangles. <laughs> St. Francis... St. Francis replies, it's the tribes that settled there, Lord, the suburbanites. They started calling your flowers weeds 
and went to great lengths to kill them and replace them with grass. God says, grass, but it's so boring. It's not colorful. It doesn't attract butterflies, birds, and bees, only grubs and sodworms. It's temperamental with temperatures. Do these suburbanites really want all that grass growing there? Apparently so, Lord. They go to great lengths to grow it and to keep it green. They begin each spring by fertilizing grass and poisoning any other plant that crops up in the lawn. And God replies, the spring rains and warm weather probably make grass grow really quickly. That must make the suburbanites happy. Apparently not, Lord. As soon as it grows a little, they cut it, sometimes twice a week. God says they cut it. Well, they, do, they, do they bale it like hay? Not exactly, Lord. Most of them rake it up and put it into bags. They bag it? Why? Is it a cash crop? Do they sell it? No, sir, just the opposite. They pay to throw it away. God's like, well, now let me get this straight. They fertilize grass so that when it does grow, they cut it off and pay to throw it away. Yes, sir. These suburbanites must really be relieved in the summer then when we cut back on the rain and turn up the heat that, sh that surely slows the growth and saves them a lot of work. St. Francis says, you're not going to believe this, Lord, but when the grass stops growing so fast, they drag out hoses and pay more money to water it so they continue to mow it and pay to get rid of it. <laughs> God says, what nonsense. At least they kept some of the trees. That was a sheer stroke of genius, if I do say so myself. The trees grow leaves in the spring to provide beauty and shade in the summer. In the autumn, they fall to the ground and they form a natural blanket to keep moisture in the soil and protect the trees and bushes. Plus, as they rot, the leaves form compost to enhance the soil. It's a natural circle of life. And St. Francis says, you better sit down, Lord. The suburbanites have drawn a new circle. As soon as the leaves fall, they rake them into great piles and pay to have them hauled away. God replies, no. What, what do they do to protect the shrub and the tree roots in the winter and to keep the soil moist and loose? To which St. Francis replies, well, after throwing away the leaves, Lord, they go out and buy something they call mulch, and they haul it home and spread it around in place of the leaves. Well, where, where do they get this mulch? Well, Lord, they cut down trees and grind them up to make the mulch. God says, enough. I, I don't want to think about this anymore. Sister Catherine, you're in charge of the arts. What movie have you scheduled for us tonight? And she says, Dumb and Dumber, Lord. It's a real stupid movie about. And God says, never mind. I think I just heard the whole story from St. Francis. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that the truth? Yeah, it, it really is. It's it, just it's I'm, constant. I'm, laugh I'm laughing so hard. It's good. My son-in-law's out here weed eating. I I found myself last fall and winter, we've got uh, a number of trees in our front yard and I'm raking them up and I used to mulch it up yep. and now it's, it's gonna break down anyway. and I breaked it up and I put it in this big center natural area and it looked pretty neat, you know? I mean, it, I, it was full of leaves. Most people have pine straw or official mulch, but I was like, this is the natural, I was inspired by yeah. this piece. Yeah. And it's like, God gave us these leaves and this is their purpose. And so I put them there. And then this spring we're doing some other planting. My wife says, well, these leaves look kind of trashy in this natural area. I said, it's the natural area. You just said it yourself. It's natural. These are leaves. Yeah. And she says, well, I, I this looks trashy. I don't want these leaves in did here. Did you tell her that she was committing blasphemy? <laughs> I mean, did you? You don't care how my divorce unfolds, do you? I, no, not at all. <laughs> but here's what I did. I ended up raking the leaves twice. Uh, Once in the fall to the natural area. Sure. Then out of the natural area. And I just told her, I said, look, this is what she said. I didn't tell you to rake them. I said, yes, yes, you did. Yes. you." I said, so just make a note that I raked leaves, the same leaves twice. My dad is up in heaven going, you got to be kidding me. You rake the same leaves twice and then I burned them and I will not be doing that again. Well, you yes, know, but, but, but you no, know something, not. you know something, you're getting the exercise in. Okay. There aren't many gyms that have leaf raking which is one of the best exercises you could possibly imagine. 
Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that, it's the same thing. So then we pay to join a gym. <laughs> when well, you could come to my house and rake leaves and push them out. What would be great if, if you could pay to join the gym with bags of leaves and grass? <laughs> Let's work on this. <laughs> yeah, but guys, stuff. the bottom line is nothing more beautiful than a green lawn with no weeds. It's a pretty thing, but the way we look at it, I got, I've got a Heinz 57 lawn. I've got all kinds <laughs> of stuff growing in it. And even my wife will say, hey, it's green. Hey, you yeah. know what? If you want a green lawn, a beautiful green lawn without any work, beautiful for green, with no weeds, go, go to join a golf course. Yeah. Let That's somebody true. else do it. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. That just resonates so much to me uh, because that is exactly the foolishness that we do. Well, that's modern society. That's what we oh. do. So we were on vacation. We were on vacation one one summer a few years ago, and our daughter came by to check on things. And she called us and she said, "Dad, I came by and there's a big sign in your front yard." So what, what, they, the neighborhood put it up that we had won yard of the month. It's like, well, man, that ain't happening again. I don't need that kind of pressure. <laughs> I'd apparently work too hard. I don't need to make, I don't need yard of the month. No, thank you. Oh, oh yeah. So, so Bill, if people want to learn about uh, your philosophy on, uh, you, you have enumerated philosophies like the 10 commandments, but I think you got like 15 of them, but yeah. now, now you have like the 16th one on thou shalt cut or not cut your lawn. Well, where, that, where can they come find all that philosophy? I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little sneaky, Art. There is out of my 15 practices for embrace the boom. There are already 16 practices, so I will maybe have to make this a 17th one. And the 16th practice is actually very, very serious. Most of them are um, just basically borrowing a lot of times from ancient philosophy that still applies today. So you can find the links to all those videos that if you if you do these things and you work on them and, and you do practice them, I have never perfected them and I never will. Uh, for, for me, one of them is today is a great day to mind your own business. I've really been struggling with that one lately. Um, <laughs> but uh, the 15 and 16 practices, they're at BillJordanEmbraceTheBoom.com. And also a link if you would like to order one of these, Embrace the Boom. I just covered up the B. Embrace the Oom. Um, uh, embrace the boom uh, to, to anchor your day with your coffee or your tea or whatever, but just to remind yourself to live your very best life, regardless of your age. You go to Bill Jordan, embrace the boom.com, free shipping on all domestic orders on this. And this is a, you guys will testify. I mean, this is a, this is a, this is a sturdy mug. It's not a cup. Uh, and there ain't, there's not a whole lot of, uh, markup. I'm not making a whole lot of money on this thing. So I'm just trying to spread the word and, to uh, empower and encourage my fellow baby boomers. So if you want, I will just close for me and just say, live your life, forget your age, and embrace the boom. And we'll join you in that, uh, to embrace the boom. And look forward Take to seeing you the next time, which I hope won't be a long back, time from now. I appreciate yeah, it. Uh, but Bill, between now and then, mow the lawn, will you? <laughs> Always. At least once a week. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.